Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So somebody wrote me an email, 65 year old man, C++ developer, a lot of experience with embedded systems, GNU, C type compilers, did some Python, has a CS degree, good programmer, but he got tired of the corporate lifestyles and the lab working lifestyle. So he's been out for about a year and he wants to look into freelancing because he uh, has too much stress related to working in the corporate environment. Not uncommon, by the way, not uncommon. Here's the thing, he's 65 years old and still needs to work. So we're gonna cover this. So A, yes, you can freelance. B, most freelancing is in the small business space. So that means the web, of course. And he, he puts this in his email, he says, can you re recommend a path, web development, I guess? I have no problem paying for coaching. So I don't want to take his money in coaching because he's 65 and still needs to work. So I'm going to answer his email and give him the consult in this video right here, which I'm sure he'll see. Number one, you want to do the web stack. Number one, that's for sure. So it's HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. Since you have a lot of experience in C++ and C with embedded systems, I think the challenge will be for you will be in the layered nature that is the web. When you're writing uh, device code, system code, you just have one environment to deploy to, as far as I understand. It's not my area, but uh, that's what I understand. With the web, you got different levels. You got the front end, you got the back end. You got to do deal with the request response cycle, the stateless nature of the web, so on. So uh, that is going to be one of the challenges. There's other challenge potentially is the visual components. There's a lot of visual coding in the web space, if you will. The good news is that you just use templates. If you're not, uh, if you are design challenged, you just learn the basic principles of design, alignment, white space, font use, not, not difficult. And then uh, just use templates and away you go. That's okay, there's plenty of templates. So if you're gonna get into it, the web development for freelance, number one, it's gonna be web most of the time. Number two, uh, you're gonna learn HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. Uh, CSS3 might be the most challenging aspect of this for you. Uh, you're gonna need WordPress. Now, you can learn the basics of it, all of this so you have enough to get going pretty quickly, especially since you have a lot of programming uh, under your belt. That should be pretty easy. That should be pretty easy. So when you are freelancing, it is a totally different lifestyle than corporate. So when you're in a corporate environment, you are usually very much detached from the bottom line, meaning the process is much more important than the bottom line in many times in corporate. In the corporate environment, there's advantages where you get you got your paycheck coming, the structure is provided for you, you know you're going to get paid, yada, yada, yada. There's other advantages as well, but there's also disadvantages. It can be a very stressful environment for certain people because you're stuck in this environment, you got uh, corporate protocols to adhere to, you got corporate interpersonal dynamics that can be a lot of uh, headaches, big headaches. So some people do well in corporate, some people don't do well at all, and some people are kind of in the middle. Sounds like this guy's been doing corporate a long time, he's just had enough. One thing about the corporate environment, typically it's not the most proficient that rises, at least not technically. Those who are the funnest and who have the best interpersonal skills and can manage relationships and are fun to be around, those are the typical people who rise in the corporate environment. Keep that in mind. So on one side, you got that corporate reality, which I just described with some exceptions. On the other hand, you have freelance. Now freelance, it has its own huge advantages and its own, its own disadvantages you have to mitigate for. So the advantages of freelance is that you're free. Once you set yourself up, you can choose the type of jobs you work on. You can choose when you work. You're gonna choose how you work. You can, to a certain extent, set how much you make for your time. If you want to work 40 hours one week or 20 hours or no hours one week, that's entirely up to you. The key to do, being able to do that in freelance is establishing your business. Some people can get it established within a year or so. Some people could do it a short time. Some people it takes longer. Once you are established, which means you have at least five or six clients, 
in rotation, uh, then you have a lot of opportunity there. So that's number one. Number two, when you're freelancing, you have to be very, very good with your money, right? Because you can't depend on the t- paycheck. You can't live paycheck to paycheck. You can't have that mindset as a freelancer. You have to be. You have to grow up financially as a freelancer. You have to be able to manage, manage, manage money effectively. Money management is not. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's not AI development. Money management is really just having some decent psychological discipline coupled with a rudimentary understanding of, you know, things like not having credit card balances, not taking on debt that you don't need, learning to cut out expenses that are not not needed. Uh, This is much more of a discipline of psychology, of emotion, but you have to understand you have to develop that as a freelancer because there's no guarantee when you're going to get that next check that next payment, that next gig, especially in the early days. So when you're first starting out, you better have at least six months worth of money saved up. I recommend a year, but at least six months so that you have time to get yourself going. And in fact, I would transition from job A to B. Now, this guy here, he got so sick of dealing with the corporate life, he's actually been out of work about a year now, which is not ideal. I assume he's got some savings at 65, I hope. And um, the best way to trend is to go from, you have a job, you're tired of it, st- start setting up your freelance business, start getting it going. You can do side, you can do little gigs on the side while you're still working and making money. Start cleaning up your finances if need be. And then you can transition into the freelance space in a real good position financially. So why do you want to be in a good position financially? Because you don't want to have, be desperate for contracts, right? You don't want to be desperate for contracts. What you find is that when you start making money as a freelancer, when you have four, five, six, seven clients, then all of a sudden you can negotiate much more effectively. Your rates will go up per hour. You can start refusing jobs you don't like. That's one of the huge advantages of being a freelancer is that you can pick and choose your clients. So if you have, you know, seven, eight clients in the stable and one of your clients starts becoming a pain, you can just let them go. You can say, you know what? Sorry, I'm just so busy with work. I can't take your project this month. And that's fantastic. So that's one of the best things about freelancing. But you got to earn into that position where you have the luxury of being able to pick and choose your jobs and how you work. So that brings me to the next point where he was talking about stress. He left his workplace because there was too much stress. So there's a slow pressure at work when you work in a corporate job, slow, continuous, unrelenting pressure for a lot of people. Whereas freelancing is up and downs, up and downs, especially in this initial stages when you're first learning how to do it, you're first establishing your business, there will be stress for most people. But once you're established, then there's much less stress because jobs are usually shorter in time frame. whereas corporate jobs, you could be working on a project for many months, if not years. Whereas freelance gigs are usually a few weeks, a week, you know, a couple of months, a few months, and then you're done and then you can move on to the next thing. And so you get this nice release from the stress of the work. So there's a different type of stress in the freelance. It's intermittent, but as you become more successful, as you build up your FU stash, as you establish yourself, the stress diminishes and diminishes and diminishes. So I, you know, I've done this a lot in the past. So it makes, uh, it makes sense to me. I much prefer that. So you have to ask yourself, can you handle that initial stages in the freelance world? Can you handle the initial stages of the stress? I think most of you can. If you can't, take a check out my Lizard Wizard course. The other thing that you have to contend with or you have to be feel, feel comfortable with is um, being able to speak to people, reach out to people, start making those connections. The first few clients are the hardest to get as a freelancer. So you have to have some people skills. And even when you're managing clients and managing projects as a freelancer, you have to learn to manage the relationship that you have, however however temporary, with your prospect, with your clients. So that's a big part of it. So there you go. Different types of stress. I think in the medium term and especially long term, Freelancing is much less stressful since you have all those options as I discussed, but you just got to set it up properly. Since you're 65 
I have my notes here. Since you're 65, you got to, if you're not already on top of it, you got to get on top of your health. If you manage your diet properly, eat natural foods, no more sugars, much less breads, uh, lots of water, uh, eat uh, nice red meat. If you manage your health, get your body fat percentage, 20% or lower is ideal. 15, 16% would be great. If you can do that, combine that with minimal exercise, walking five, 10,000 steps a day, doing some stretching, drinking a lot of water. Why do I mention this in a how to freelance as a web designer video? Because if you are healthy, if you do, as I suggest, in terms of your health, exercise, natural foods, etc., body fat percentage under 20%, you're going to have much more energy. You're going to feel much better. Your attitude will be much better. Your cognitive skills will shoot up. It's really uh, quite amazing. Bottom line is your energy and your ability to do this is directly related to diet and exercise. So keep that in mind. I, at this point in time in my life, I'm not there yet, but I'm not 65 yet. I find that my health is much more important than anything else. Yeah, so coding in an RV, for sure, 100%. 100%. Another thing you can do, you're a highly experienced developer. You may want to offer yourself up as a contractor, maybe do some consulting gigs for companies, some short-term work, maybe do three-month contracts here and there where you can re work remotely. The cool thing is when you are a contractor, even working at large organizations as a temporary worker, you have a lot more power because you're just there for three months, six months, one month. Uh, you have a lot more power, a lot more flexibility. So you're, you're, you're not in that mix. You're not in that stressful mix as you would be if you're a full-time employee. I've done both contract work and lots of freelance work, mostly freelance work. Um, I found both pros and cons. When I did my contract work, the few times that I did, I was actually found it refreshing because I only had to handle one aspect of the project. I didn't have to worry about what uh, everybody else was doing. I just had to make sure my slice of it was done and that was it. Whereas freelance, another responsibility is you gotta, it's got to be delivered, right? you got to produce, right? A lot of times in big corporations, uh, the process is more important than the result. Strangely enough, I know that sounds weird. Anybody in corporate knows what I'm talking about. A lot of people in the corporate environment, they're, they're just there to check off the tech check boxes, make sure the their end of the processes are fulfilled according to a specification. That's, that's all you worry about. Then you have to do, deal with the interpersonal dynamics. Whereas uh, when you freelance or you're a contractor, the rubber meets the road. You're much more, you're much closer to the project, typically especially freelancing, which means it's got to, it's got to work. You got to deliver that website. You have to get that WordPress site up and running. You got to get, you got to get the e-commerce working. So it's a different thing. Yes, I know in some corporate jobs, blah, 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 it's all there too. But you know, these are general statements. Anyway, that's it. So you can do it at 65, certainly younger. You just have to follow the steps I just laid out here for you. And if you do that, I think you do well. So if you have any questions about what I just discussed in this video, feel free to put them below. I'll be happy to answer. I hope this was useful to you. If you're uh, watching this, I'll send you an email. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, put them in the uh, comments below. Anybody disagrees with anything I have to say, don't worry, I'll forgive you. No, but if you like my long hair, give me a thumb up. If you don't like my long hair, give me two thumbs down. That's pretty much it. Cheers, guys.